Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This show is all about achieving holistic success, something that is not talked about a lot because most people have goals around their finances, their business, their health, their relationships, but very few people talk about how you can be successful in all areas of your life. What does it take to achieve extraordinary results in all areas of your life? So you have holistic success, not just success in one area. And one of the things that I have been exploring over time, um, and, and it's, it's, it's just naturally transitioned that way, it's not something that I originally planned to, but the people I connected with, it just transitioned to that, was parenting. Um, and uh, I've had lots of other people before come on the channel who have talked about parenting and you know uh, what they are you know doing in the world to help parents whether that is building emotional intelligence or promoting you know happiness and avoid you know avoiding uh, you know child suicide etc uh, but today we have somebody very special who is also a parent coach that's what she mainly does um, and she is uh, absolutely phenomenal she we, we connect we jumped on a call before uh, and uh, she was just there was just so much alignment so much synergy so much energy there that I could not wait to bring her on but this is going to, if you're a parent this is going to be a huge one for you so with that please welcome Sue DeCaro onto the show Sue thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us thank you and thank you for that warm welcome wow <laughs> <laughs> great to be here I appreciate the opportunity well, I was really excited to actually, first of all, connect with you. And then after our, you know, initial call, I, I was really excited to have you on. Um, and, uh, I, you know, let's, let's start off. Start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself, what you do, what you're working on these days, uh, and also how you got started, how you started going down this path. Uh, that's the journey I'd love to share. Uh, so I am a parent coach and educator helping people worldwide to connect more deeply with their children, to really foster relationships that are serving both parties, not just a parent party or a child party, but both parties as they grow and thrive together. And there's certainly a lot to this, but I'd love to share a little bit about how I got to this point. I am a parent and I have two kids, two girls, one's 24 and the other is 20. And at this point in my life, I call my 24-year-old my greatest awakener because she was, as a young child, the one I called the most challenging. I don't use that word anymore because I don't think it's fair to the child, but that has been a learning and trans transitioning process for me as I've grown in my parenting. Anyway, she was very determined, uh, very stubborn in terms of she wanted her way, I wanted my way. So this is where the awakening occurs because the child in my life was mirroring back to me the areas I needed to grow by letting go a little bit, by a little less control. All of these things sometimes we think as parenting is crucial to the role, but the role is really to walk side by side with our children and grow together, watch and see what they need to help them thrive, as well as learn what we can from them in terms of how we need to thrive ourselves. And so to say my household was a battleground is an understatement. <laughs> to say that there was chaos every day is an understatement. I mean, it was, it, it was more like war zone. You know, I hate to describe <laughs> it that way. Uh, but every day I can remember driving home from work saying, you know, what shoe's going to drop next? Knowing now what I know, that is certainly not a good attitude to come into the home with looking for what's going to happen next because what we focus on grows. And in my life, the chaos grew. So through many years of therapy, uh, I didn't know about parent coaching then. I'm not sure there was anyone in my area that did this type of work, uh, but many years of therapy and lots of work on myself and learning how to be the best parent I could be for my child. Uh, when she was about 16, I came across conscious parenting and started to study that. And that is where the journey, what I do now began. I realized that I'm not the only parent that is having really challenging times. Uh, my daughter was also diagnosed with a number of things, um, oppositional defiant disorder, anxiety, depression, many things that many kids have you know, experienced and are labeled with. And I'm not a big fan of labels. So I find these words are just cues as to how we can treat the child in a different way to create an environment that helps them to thrive. So anyway, I know this is a lot of information I'm sharing in a very brief amount of time, 
But I heard of parent coaching as I was still midway through my transformation into being the best parent I could be or a better parent than I was. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do this. I'm being called to do this because parents all over the world are struggling just like me. And I want to give back. I want to support. I want to support from the place of expertise and knowledge and education, as well as hope and compassion and understanding. And so, you know, my journey has been a rocky road. Uh, we have a much different relationship now. And I have so much experience, pretty much with everything, to be able to shed hope in my work with parents. So that's kind of what brought me to this place. Awesome. Wow. Uh, that's, that's such an amazing story. And, and for people in the audience, I want to ask you, which elements of Sue's story could you relate to? If you're a parent and your child is not listening to you and there is friction there, and the fact is that you're struggling to deal with the situation because they're you know, showing challenging behavior, etc., then it's very hard at that point to kind of step back and say, well, maybe there's something that I need to work on. And, and something that Sue mentioned, uh, which was super powerful, was the fact that you know, she was mirroring and, and the word mirroring is, is really, really powerful that the fact that the child is just mirroring something that you need to fix within yourself. Um, and I absolutely love that. So if you have those sort of challenges in your life as a parent, then I, I think Sue has a lot of value to add. She is a very successful parent coach. She has a Facebook group at the moment, which is nearly 400 people that she's working with. She's coaching on a daily basis, right? So the, a lot of the stuff that we'll be talking about from now on will be focused on that. So, Sue, let's go back to that bit. Can you maybe talk into a bit more detail about what, what is it that you mean by mirroring exactly in terms of what, what the behavior was? And when you talk about your own transformation, what, what did that look like in terms of what did you have to work on yourself in order to make sure that your daughter wasn't mirroring what, what was going on inside of you? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Well, first of all, I came to parenting conditioned, as we all are. So I came with this preconceived notion of what parenting looked like. I came from a family where there was a lot of hitting going on. And I remember how I hated that and said, I will never hit my kids. Well, let me tell you how powerful conditioning is. You may say, I will never hit my children. But when you have a child and something happens and you're reactionary, Sometimes you fall into that conditioning. Mm. Okay, I did twice in my life. I'm not embarrassed to admit it. It was only twice. I was able to shift that very painful process that I had fallen into. So as a parent, first we need to look at our conditioning. And I think once we start looking at that and looking at the values that we want to bring to parenting and looking at our children as these human beings that were put on this earth specifically through us or given to us, to help us grow. Mm -hmm. So the child that you have, however they got to you, is here to help you grow just as you're here to help them grow. And so I look at each child, and again, I have two, as equal partners. Now, no one told me this years ago. I wish I'd known this because every book you read is going to tell you something different, and it's not necessarily going to help you understand your child. So there's two things that need to happen in parenting. One, two major things. One is we need to look at the child in front of us. My kids could not be more different. I'm sure many parents could say that about their children. Every child is a unique human being in and of themselves. And understanding who they are, what they're about, what their unique strengths are, what their gifts are, what they need to grow. You know, some kids are very sensitive, so they need you to be aware of their sensitivities. Other children are um, loud or aggressive or headstrong. That's not good, bad, or indifferent. It just is. And so when we see the child clearly, we can see what we need to do as a parent to help that child to grow. Now, in times of struggles, those are really the optimum time we're not really in a position to, but it's the optimum time to look at yourself. So you're knee deep in a struggle. Maybe you're screaming and your child's screaming. And at that moment, you can't say, where do I need to grow? Because you're knee deep in, you know, that hyperreactive mode. But afterward, you need to, it's important to reflect on what was this about? 
where was I coming from? What triggered me? What is my child telling me that I'm not seeing? So for example, when my kids were young, I was an incredibly controlling mother. And I thought the more rules I had, the more I could keep everything in this you know, little cozy box and everybody would do as they're supposed to do. And it was because I was losing control that I was trying to create more control, which is counterproductive. And so if I had to look back, if I had to go back, that was a big pitfall for me. And learning to let go a little bit was a key to allowing the growth of my children, the mistakes of my children to teach them instead of thinking that keeping them in this box was going to prevent any mistakes. Mm -hmm. What it happened is it created a lot of lying. Because I was so controlling, my children would then lie to do what it is they wanted to do, knowing that I wouldn't let them do it mm. otherwise. Wow. Wow. That's some really, really powerful stuff there, Sue. Um, I think the most, most powerful thing you said there was the fact that the, the children are here to help us grow. That is just absolutely amazing. Pure gold. I love that. Uh, and we'll explore that further. Um, but you're absolutely right in terms of the fact that when you become a parent, I mean, the only reference point you have is from your own childhood. Like what, what your parents the, you know, did to you or how they behaved with you, how they, you know, what they said to you, how they dealt with you, all sorts of other stuff. That's the only reference point. So you are mm -hmm. kind of conditioned. I mean, it's not like you go and, and you can get, you know, firsthand experience and apprenticeship or something on parenting before you actually become a parent, right? There's no such thing. So, I wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all wish we, we had that, but you know, you, you don't have that. So really your only reference point is what, you know, what happened to you when you were growing up and you, you, that's the only thing you know so when you become a parent you naturally would resort back to the, that sort of behavior and, and that sort of those sort of patterns etc because that's what you're used to and another really amazing thing you said is that you see your children as equal partners because you see them as people who are there to help you grow so you're equal partners in the growth element mm -hmm. um, also really really powerful but for parents who like you said, might be experiencing this and they might be overprotective and they don't want their children to make mistakes they, and, and they are putting in the rules and they just see failure after failure after failure. The child is not listening. They're displaying challenging behavior, etc. And I'm sure you, you come across many clients who, who have those sort of issues. Yes. Then what, what is the first starting point? What, what is the first steps that they really need to be taking in order to break free of that? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's a few first steps. The, the first step is really reflecting what, what is triggering me. You know, when, when tensions go high and our children become what I like to call as hyperreactive, they're in that hyperreactive state as opposed to like a sweet spot, and we join them there, we're just putting fuel on the fire. So when our children behave in certain ways, it triggers something in us. And so, you know, when I work with my clients, one of the first things we look at is the triggers. What is triggering this particular person and why? It's usually not about the child. Mm. It's not necessarily about the child's behavior, but maybe the child starts screaming and the parent is triggered from something that occurred in their past, mm. some sort of conditioning or something that makes them just go crazy because screaming is not acceptable, you know, in their family of origin. Um, the second thing is we, our children, again, as equal partners, need to be empowered in the parenting process, in the pr process of creating a relationship, a connection, a deep connection. So, you know, for example, when you have a power struggle with your child and you take a step back and, you know, perhaps you want your child to, um, you know, get dressed out the door at 8 a.m. in the morning and your child can't seem to get moving till 8.15. Hmm. So instead of putting all these conditions in place, which this is a very common problem and yet very simplistic problem to work with our children in reference to. So in order to make this happen, instead of putting rules into place or enforcing things for your child to do to get out the door, when we open up the conversation with our children, we have a situation. Let's talk about how we can solve this together. We need to leave the house by 8 a.m. And, you know, perhaps your child is four or five or six. 
as early as four, you can really start to communicate. Now they can't tell time, but you can talk about time frames. We need to get out the door at a certain time and we're struggling with that, which makes us late. What can we do together? You know, and then you talk based on age of the particular points, you know, child getting their shoes on, getting their clothes out, ready to wear, depending on the age again. You know, breakfast, what what they might like, perhaps they suggest the night before. So our children are brilliant. I mean, brilliant. However, we aren't giving them the opportunity to help us parent, to help us solve issues that come up. Now, here's a classic example that maybe many of the listeners can relate to. Technology. Technology in homes is a huge ordeal. Parents come to me all the time with technology issues, but those aren't really the, the issues. Those are just the the triggers you know what's behind all of that is really something else but one of my clients uh, recently had an issue with a client with a child who was eight years old and she couldn't get him out the door for school because the child got on uh, i believe it was Fortnite or one of those games um in the morning before school and could not get off mm. and so it became a battle and in talking with the mother i suggested that she sit down with her son and discuss the fact that this was an issue, how could they work together to change it so that he could leave on time in the morning? And this is where the brilliance comes in, our little ones. He said, turn off the internet in the morning. Mm. I can't control this. Turn it off. And for many of our children, technology, you know, and for us as adults, has been created with addicted qualities. And we are all addicted to technology in some way, shape, or form. It's hard to get off. This is the way, you know, the people who are heading up these large companies are making it. So we have to connect with our children to create methods, ways, um, opportunities for them to be part of the answer, part of the solution, not the problem. They're not a problem, right? Yeah. We're on this journey together. And the more we empower them to help us in a kind-hearted, compassionate way, the more we solve things and move forward together as opposed to laying down the law because, you know, it's top down. We're the parent. We're in charge. We're the boss. You're the child. You need to respect me. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. that that's, that's actually a brilliant strategy that you sh shared there about building the connection with the child, open the conversation and say, hey, how are we going to actually solve this problem? together. I love that. Now, has there ever been a time where you have come across uh, a parent who are maybe just, just being a bit strong headed and they're just like, no, 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 the problem's all with the child, nothing to do with me. Um, so at that point, how do you actually get them to realize it? How do you actually get them to, you know, change their mindset? So every, every parent comes to me thinking, we need to, <laughs> um, you know, I, I was trying to fix my children, mm. you know, and so through, this, through a slow process, we talk about the makeup of a child. I mean, I, I'm a strength-based coach, so I don't sit in the muck of all the challenges you currently have. We shift them into how we can make changes to bring about something different from what you have. And if it's not working as you have it now, then we need to look at something else. Perhaps it's a reaction that we might have to the child's behavior. So very slowly do I walk them into the, the role of parent, mm -hmm. right? And talking about the parent role is about the parent. It's about what we bring. It's not about the child. It's about what we bring, how we react, how we respond, how we encourage, how we support, how we navigate this path how the journey looks from our point of view, how we see our child. And many times when we start to uncover the strengths of the child and talk about how we can create conditions for the child to grow and to thrive, the parent realizes, and it's like an aha moment. Well, that's really about me. So, you know, I, I don't go into this process saying, you're coming to me, I'm your coach, and parenting is about you, not your mm -hmm. child. We are not fixing your child but we are changing conditions. So it's a slow process. Uh, I take them there quite slowly. And with all my clients, it's an aha moment because you know, they've, they've engaged with me with a commitment to bring something different from what they currently have. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, 
and in terms of parents who are very overprotective and they're just like, you know, they, they've got so many rules in place, they're very bossy, they want the child to be, uh, you know, a certain way, behave a certain way, do certain things, etc., and no mistakes are allowed. How do you actually get them to build a connection um, at a level where they are able to let go and open up and make sure that the child have that room to grow? You're describing one of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I mean, I th this is, I, I'm just kidding. This is yeah. a very common issue. Hmm. Um, I can remember a client saying to me, you know, I don't want my child at 50 years old living in my basement and the child's 14. So, you know, first of all, we don't go from 14 to 50. We stay mm -hmm. at 14. We stay in this moment. So, you know, focusing on this moment and what we know in this moment, um, you know, success is huge for parents. They want their children to be successful. So I talk a lot about what success is because what a parent's version of success is may not be what the child's version of success is. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had, to, I had to mourn through this myself and what I expected from my first child. Um, I, I think success is what it looks like to that person. And so it's not fair for us to really put on our children the expectation of their success looking like doctor, lawyer, you know, whatever the case may be, going to an Ivy League school, going to college. Now, I'm not advocating that we don't want our children to go to college, but we want our children to really learn and grow and achieve the things that are part of their blueprint, part of their philosophy. We cannot make them go to college. So forcing children backfires. I tried it. It didn't work. Um, and so again, I'm here as, you know, the guinea pig. I can certainly share with parents what doesn't work uh, from my own, you know, previous years of parenting. But Listening and looking at the child you have is the first step in trying to connect to that child. Mm -hmm. If you are looking at their grades and you are focused on what they're doing in school, when they come home, nagging, bossy, uh, lecturing, you're, first of all, the lectures, if it's more than a few words, your child has tuned you out. They're not listening. They don't want to hear a lecture. And if you're a lecturer, they've tuned you out before you begin because they're aware that that's what you're going to do. And so our children, just like adults, are wired for connection. They need to be connected with at least one adult in their life, mm. hopefully a parent, uh, but if not, a teacher. They need that connection to feel safe, secure, soothed, loved. Children desire the, the three words that I love, seen, heard, and valued. They desire mm -hmm. that. They want to be seen every day. They want to be heard every day and they want to be valued. So I share this information with parents, and I talk about the fact that we want to be seen. We want to be seen by our spouses. We want to be seen at work. We want to be valued by our spouses. We want to be valued at work. We want to be valued by all the relationships that we have. And so do our children, but even more so, even more so. Mm -hmm. So every day, do we see them? Do we hear them? And do we value them? And that's not coming into play by looking at the education, looking at the homework that they did, what their grades are, you know, did they clean their room and nagging them. So the first step would be the first 15 minutes that we're in the presence of a child. For example, they come home from school and we're home or we come home from work and they're home. The first 15 minutes is really important connection time, not important time to nag about homework, talk about homework, you know, talk about technology use, but just be with your child. What that looks like depends on you and the child. Mm -hmm. So I do help people find specific techniques that work. If your child is not a talker, perhaps you just sit down next to your child and be in their presence and wait, see what happens. Take it organically. Mm -hmm. But you cannot always have an agenda with your children because they don't, they don't want your agenda. They have their own agenda. And we need to honor that too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's really, really powerful. Um, I love everything that you're sharing because I think this is something that is very rarely talked about parenting. I think it's quite personal to people as well and they take it quite personally. Um, so, and, and don't, other people don't want to step on, on, 
you know, people's toes. So there is that element. Um, or there's the other extreme where everybody's just giving you loads of advice on parenting and quite often bad conflicting advice on parenting. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you end up kind of not being sure what is it that you really need to be following because, you know, everybody's got different things to say. Um, so I think whatever you're sharing is absolute gold and it's really powerful and that this is the message that needs to be heard by everybody. So thank you for sharing all that. My pleasure. I, I think one of the things I'd like to add is every parent has the wisdom within. Mm. So, you know, we, we listen to noise around us and outside of us, societal no noise, noise of the neighbors, you know, what everyone is doing. And we think we have to do what the Smiths do or the Joneses do or whoever. And yet every parent I work with has the wisdom within. Every parent mm. all over the world has the wisdom within. It's that we don't take time to tap into what that looks like and time and space. We cannot be running 100 miles an hour and actually feel or listen to our internal wisdom, our internal guidelines, because there's no space for that. And that's where coaching becomes so powerful because I engage with clients to help them tap into their value system for their family. It's not my values. It's theirs. I don't live with them. So, you know, although some would like me to, I don't. <laughs> um, I'm not super nanny for sure. But um, I think that when we tap into what we want this picture to look like with our children, how we want to walk side by side, and, and with a coach like myself, what steps do we need to put into place to get to this point? And we start to see this happening. That's where the beauty comes in. Mm. That's where we really feel and see the, the connection, the, uh, the family unit, our values come to life. And, you know, values can be as simple as having dinner together and talking without cell phones. Imagine that, you know, having a basket and encouraging everybody to participate in conversation. So the littlest thing can mean so much, but it's really, you know, every parent has the wisdom within. We're just so busy on this hamster wheel that we call life that we don't really have a chance to honor that wisdom, hear it, see it, feel it, et cetera. Perfect. And, and this is the reason I, I, I like to bring on people from all facets of life on the channel, because I like to explore what it takes to be successful in every area of your life, like to achieve the holistic success. So whether that means, you know, success as a, you know, business person, um, as a professional, as a, you know, parent, as a, you know, somebody who is conscious about the health, etc. So this is great. This is, this is absolutely perfect um, that, you know, we're, we're going down this path and we're sharing all these strategies and we're exploring this, you know, idea of how can you be um, a successful parent? And I love that. Um, I actually wanted to ask you, um, like, do you think becoming a good parent and, you know, uh, having all these, all this knowledge, all these strategies in place, etc., and applying them, does that only come after you have become a parent or is there something that people who are expecting to become parents or people who want to start a family can do to prepare for that stage? I, I think that's a great point. I think you can prepare for this at any point in the journey because it's, it's really being conscious. It's being a conscious human being. It's living a conscious life. Mm. And, you know, all these things we're talking about is really about conscious connection to oneself and those around us, whether it's our children or spouses, you know, friends, family. And I think, you know, if you're preparing to become a parent, start a family, um, whatever that looks like to you, to connect with the things from your past, your conditioning could be very helpful to bring about your value system that you'd like to see for your family. What does that look like? You know, obviously we come into this parenting role, sadly, I guess I should say, with expectations, mm -hmm. expectations of what this family is going to look like. I'm not talking about expectations. I'm talking about values. I came in with expectations. You know, my kids will never cry in an airplane because I couldn't stand to be on an airplane with crying kids. That was before I had children. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, this isn't so easy, you know. Um, but I'd see parents with kids who are crying thinking, you know, why can't they do something? Um, you know, we're all doing our best. And so we come into this with expectations of what it's going to look like. Release the expectations and look at your values. What mm -hmm. is important to you? What does connection look like to you? 
you know, you don't know how to help your child thrive until you see your child and see them clearly. And that is at every age and stage of development. Mm -hmm. That's every day. Your child yeah. is transitioning every day, every moment of the day, because every moment is a new moment. And so really paying attention to those cues just continues the process of growth. But looking at your own journey, looking at your own level of conditioning, what you liked about, you know, how your parents parented you and what you choose to leave behind, what triggers you in life, what doesn't trigger you, you know, these are all important things to connect with oneself. And I think it is extremely difficult to connect with the children in our care, the children we bring into this world, if we're not connected to ourself first. So the first relationship begins with you. And Beautiful. it begins with that conscious connection of seeing yourself clearly and connecting with the internal vibrations within. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right there. And I think deep down, uh, you know, we, we all want to be good parents. We all want to, you know, have that connection with our children. We all want to build that relationship and, you know, have, have, a, have an amazing family life. But I think... It, it's part of the conditioning where, you know, something happens and then, you know, you go back to your old patterns, your old reference points, and maybe that's where things start to go wrong. Again, uh, I'm not an expert and I don't have the answers, but it certainly seems to be, you know, that that's, that's what seems to happen. Um, you talked about, you know, conscious parenting. And right now you talked about, you know, uh, synergy and vibrations and everything like that. So is, is, is that part of conscious parenting? And maybe can you expand on, you know, for people who are not familiar with conscious parenting, what, what does it actually involve? So like I've been talking about all along, um, I mean, conscious parenting is really seeing ourselves clearly and seeing the child in front of us clearly. And what is ours to own? What is, you know, about our child? And to be conscious is really just to be alert in each moment, to be aware in each moment, to be in that moment. Mm. And, you know, what you brought up just a second ago about, you know, conditioning seeping back in or, you know, patterns coming back after, you know, we think we've changed. Changing is a ongoing moment to moment process. And we are going to fall into old patterns. We are going to fall into something that's, you know, comfortable or from our past. And I think the key is in, in conscious parenting and in conscious living is being okay with that, knowing that you're human being. You're bound to make mistakes. You're bound to do things that you might choose not to do after you have a chance to reflect. But give your yourself a chance to reflect reflect. Mm. Give, your chance, bleh, give yourself a chance to look at your behavior and own it. Mm. One of the greatest lessons we can offer to our children is being a good model. Mm. And so modeling, you know, I just screamed my head off because, you know, that was my old self speaking, not my new self speaking. And I slipped back going to your child and saying, you know what, later, not at that moment, but taking time for the child to regain, you know, their, their breath and us to also, you know, come to a place of calm and owning the, the explosion, owning the behavior and saying, I'm really sorry. I, you know, lost it for a moment and I wish I hadn't yelled at you. And, you know, the modeling is part of being aware, being conscious, taking responsibility. And we want our children to take responsibility too in living in this, you know, conscious uh, environment in our homes. And that involves them saying, you know, I, I wish I hadn't done this or I did this and I want to own up to it. We're the models. We need to model what we want to see in our children, not just the expectations and the rules. We need to be what we want to see in them so that they have something to look at and look to because children are not doing as we're telling them to do anymore. They're doing as we do. It's not do what I say, not what I do. It's do what I do. We're not telling them that. That's just how they're behaving, right? So you want respect? Be respectful. You want good listening? Be an extra good listener. Give your child incredible connection time when your child talks. Look at them eye to eye, be on their level, get rid of distractions, give them your full attention. Awesome. Uh, for people in the audience, there you go. I think the most powerful 
the most amazing number one strategy has just been revealed to you. You've been handed the keys to the kingdom and it's <laughs> lead by example. If you want your children to be a certain way and behave a certain way and do certain things, do them first. Be the model. I love it. Mm -hmm. That is super, super powerful. And I also love the fact that, you know, how you talked about growth because, um, a lot of the times people have that sort of fixed uh, mindset around parenting as in, you know, I'm now a parent and that's it. And one of the things that's run through our conversation is growth. So parenting is not a stagnant static state. It's a process. It's a journey of growth. So um, I'm just wondering, like, how, how do you define that that journey uh, of you know when you become a parent and you know things change things evolve and you actually have to you know adapt and you know learn new things and try new things and fail and try something different so I, I, when you're coaching your clients how, how do you actually explain to them about this journey of growth well, I think the cues are from our children. You know, children go through ages and stages of development, which, you know, is a whole nother topic. Um, but they go through these ages and stages of development, not according to a book, but according to their timeline. Each individual unique child has their timeline that they're going to meet, you know, the walking, the talking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my, my mother, years ago, found out I loved bologna. She stocked up on bologna. And I suddenly didn't like bologna anymore, uh, you know, pounds and pounds of it. So, you know, the key is our children are going to let us know what's changing by us participating in their lives. You know, so I'm sure I let her know in some way, shape or form they didn't like bologna anymore. But, you know, the key to that is that don't expect tomorrow to be the same as today. Because every day and every minute is a new moment, especially with children who are growing and developing and learning at a very fast pace. Mm. So we need to just pay attention. We don't need to have all the answers. We don't need to know all the information. We need to observe in our own home and watch our children for cues. So, you know, you don't have to come up with, uh, you know, this fast paced way to react to everything your silence can be a beautiful way to see what's going on with your child. Mm. So, you know, for example, your child becomes a teen. For many parents, this is a unnerving time. Child's 13, they have a group of friends, you don't know their friends. You know, their friends all get in the car and you want to start having a conversation to learn about all their friends. But what if you just sit back and listen and observe what's going on? That is how you learn. Mm. Watching your child interact, watching what your child does, allowing your child the opportunity to show you what the relationships look like. Yeah. So, you know, we can't, we can't put our children in these boxes and expect them to, you know, live with those very specific tight boundaries. I should say, you know, glass walls. Um, you know, we can have loosely formed boxes with boundaries and I'm talking very large boxes, that are constantly renegotiated. So for example, you know, child is five, you might have boundaries that are just about the child being safe, right? Child can't go out and run in the street. Mm. So that's the outer perimeter of the box. But the child has freedom within the box. The child has a lot of freedom within the box. You mm. know, that can come into play with brushing your teeth, putting your clothes on, getting, you know, ready for school, eating, breakfast. We want our children to do it right now, right here. You know, I know I did years ago. And so giving some sense of freedom to our children at various stages based on what freedom they need at that stage, right? So a four-year-old and a 14-year-old are going to have different freedoms. Not that you want a 14-year-old to play with traffic, but, you know, they're obviously allowed to walk down the street and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So yeah. your boundaries are different based on the age and stage of development as of your particular child, not children, your child. And then you give your child some freedom within those boundaries to explore, to learn, to grow, to make mistakes. Because the greatest learning occurs from the mistakes we make and how we clean those up, which is another part of conscious parenting. It's yeah. not about consequences. 
It's not about, you know, a child made a mistake, so we take their cell phone away. It's about using discipline, using, you know, an opportunity as a teaching moment. So a child does something that, you know, is troublesome or concerning. We talk with the child about how they could do it differently, what they learned from this, and how they can correct it. And that is a way to teach our child through the challenge, not shame our child with, you know, some form of discipline that really has nothing to do with the actual behavior. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Awesome. So, you know, freedom within the boundaries and then, you know, look at discipline as part of conscious parenting as an opportunity to teach, not an opportunity to scold, manipulate, coerce, shame a child. Mm. Yeah. Which was my childhood and, and many of ours, you know, in, in the generation I'm in, that we were shamed, coerced, you know, this was taken away, that was taken away. Of course, we didn't have cell phones, but, you know, the bike, <laughs> what have you. Yeah, yeah, wow. Um, Sue, I'm wondering what advice you have for the parents who are super busy, they have their careers, they have their jobs, they have their businesses, etc., and they are struggling to deal with the behavior of their children, et cetera. Um, but the most important element, I guess, for them would be time. Spend, you know, carving out that time um, out of their really, really hectic, busy schedules um, to, to spend time with their children. So what, what advice do you have for those parents? Yeah, I work with a lot of those types of parents. And I think one of the key factors is when you carve out time, carve out non-distracted time, carve mm -hmm. out time to be in your child's world, not expect them to be in your world. Uh, it's not carving out time to go to the grocery store and do your errands. It's carving out time to see your child in their world and enter it with them. If your child likes, yeah, I'm going to use this because this is what I can think of, Fortnite, and your child wants to show you something on Fortnite that's their world. And sorry to say, this is the world we're living in that, you know, we, we have to enter their world, not expect them to come to our world and join us. The more we learn about what they like, the more we learn about them. Mm -hmm. So it's entering your child's world in the whatever amount of time that you have, being with your child, fully present, fully on, no distractions, and hear, see, and value who your child is in that moment. Connect with them by presence. You know, as I mentioned earlier, maybe your child doesn't want to talk with you. Sit down next to them. Be with them. But children need that connection. They need to have the adults in their life pay attention to them, be with them, want to enjoy them. What do we want our children to see us as in, in, in their childhood? What do we want them to remember about their childhood? Mom and dad were always working, or when mom and dad had time we did this and we did that and we did the other so it's really making the, the memories that we can find time to create making them count making them important for mm. ourselves and our children yeah i love that the fact you you said that um you know it's it's about the time that you do carve out that is you know not distracted time and you're taking an interest in what your children are interested in. And I absolutely love that. So you enter into their world. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really powerful because a lot of the times you can, you can, you, you, you carve out time, but that time needs to be then focused on the child entirely. And mm -hmm not like you said, running errands and, and, you know, doing other things because children don't mind you working. Children don't mind the fact that you have a job, you have a business or whatever. They understand that because children, like you said, are very, very clever. What they have a problem with is that when mom and dad do have time, they don't spend that time with me. Yeah. Full on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think the second part of this, which we haven't touched on, is self-care. Mm. So, you know, for any parent and, you know, I, any parent, I mean, everybody I work with, I bring this up. Self-care is crucial. If you are, you know, a working parent and your spouse is working and you don't have a lot of time for your children and or your, you know, or your life, and it's more difficult to carve out time, you still need that self-care time in order to have 
the energy to take care of your family. Yeah. So self-care, you know, people say it's very selfish. I say it's selfless. It's essential mm. because if you do not take care of yourself first as, as the priority, then you don't have the energy that you need in your tank to take care of the rest of your family. Plus, this also comes down to modeling you know, how important it is, even a five-year-old, they see you meditating or taking care of yourself or going for a run, whatever your, you know, your expertise in self-care is, you're modeling that for them as well. How important it is that as a mom or dad or caretaker, we are taking care of ourselves first so that we have the energy to be able to take care of everybody else. You know, it's just like the car. You have to drive your kids to activities all day long and you don't fill up your gas tank, the car's dead on the road, right? So we have to take care of ourselves in that same way. And I think that in a busy world where we're on the hamster wheel, it's hard to see that as a priority. But we can see the difference when we do take care of ourselves. I know many of the parents I work with, when they carve out the time for self-care, they feel different. Mm. They feel different. So the power struggles don't immediately enrage a parent because they're more relaxed and energized inside their own body to be able to keep calm in these situations. They've taken good care of themselves and have more energy to maintain that neutrality in moving through difficult situations. I absolutely love the fact that you mentioned that because I know a lot of parents and especially moms just burn themselves out, right? There's give, 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 and they feel really bad about taking time because they, hey, I need to be spending this time, you know, with my children or, you know, doing stuff with them and etc. But you're absolutely right. You know, there's a reason that in an airplane, they tell you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before right. you put it on anybody else. And, you know, we, we all know that you can't pour from an empty glass. So like you said, you do need to take the time out. And I would actually say you need to gift yourself that time yes. to energize, to recharge, and then you can give back more. Then you can be more present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love how you how you said that. It's a gift, but it's a gift that we have to give. It's mm -hmm. essential. Oh yeah, it's not just a, a privilege or you know uh, a holiday gift. It's a gift every day that you need to give yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know I, I I'm a parent myself. I've got two kids. You know my my boy six, my my younger one, my daughter she's three. Um, and yeah, I mean I I I know that I have to take care of myself because otherwise I, I won't be able to give to them. I won't be able to, you know, spend all my time with them and, and be the best parent that I can be, bring the best version of myself for them. So really, if I'm, you know, taking that time out, I'm doing it for them, <laughs> you know. Um, so even though I, I, I might go to the gym, I might do my meditation, I might just sit down and read or switch off and, and you know, watch something on Netflix, but I need that time so I can then give back to my children. It's beautiful. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Um, now, Sue, do you have any practices? Do you have any routines? Do you have any, um, say, you know, special, special sort of um, values that you have in your own household uh, with your children that have helped you maintain a good relationship, deepen the connection with your children, um, and approach the relationship from a more, like you say, conscious, mm -hmm. conscious angle. Absolutely. Uh, again, my kids are 20 and 24. So, you know, I'm at a whole different place than I was years ago. But um, my communication is different with both of them because they're both entirely different. My 20 year old is very sensitive and emotional. And so the way I relate to her is, number one, honoring her emotions, hearing her, you know, whether it's sadness or disappointment or excitement or what have you about whatever the case is. I listen. I listen more. So in my, in my practice, silence is golden. We don't have to solve our children's problems that they come to us with. We just have to listen mm. and acknowledge. Sometimes that's all they need. Or we have to ask a question, what do you think? So, you know, the, the need to fix a child's, you know, experiences, a, a child's friendship, boyfriends, etc., cetera, is, is not our job. We're here to guide, to usher, to ask questions. But it's their job to, to lead their life and their journey. So I look at my kid's journey as theirs. 
-hmm. I don't tell them what to do. I don't, you know, I don't um, impose my values. Uh, my oldest daughter has a, has a child and she's three. I love being, a, I'm not going to use the word grandma. I love being ya ya. I'm ya ya. And, you know, I'm asked for advice on occasion. I will say, do you want advice as me, your mom, or do you want advice as me, the parent coach? Because they're two different things when you're talking about parenting. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, gentle. I'm gentle. I'm, I use silence as a technique. I do things with my kids that they enjoy doing. I climb into their world still. And, you know, their world is, is maybe different from my world. I listen to their music. Not my kind of music, but you know, sometimes we do things to learn what our children like, and we may find something that we actually do enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with TV shows. You know, as a family, we watch So You Think You Can Dance. That's a highlight here in my household. So, you know, it's really taking the cues still from my kids at 20 and 24 um, to connect more deeply with them, to listen. Uh, in April, my daughter brought a, a situation home, you know, in relationship to her boyfriend of five and a half years, six years. And it, it's not my journey whether she stays with this guy after five and a half, six years. It's a long time um, or not. It's about her. So, you know, I zip it and I just ask the questions that help support her energy, her emotions and her feelings. What's important to her? And that's the best gift we can give our children is is to shift it back to them. They always want our answer sometimes. Mm. They, they don't always, they sometimes want our answer. Uh, and they sometimes want us to tell them what to do. But don't they learn more by thinking through it themselves, maybe with our guidance and coming up with an idea that we can support and walk mm. next to them with, even if it's the wrong thing. So I walk through life next to my children at 20 and 24. Um, and you know we're fully connected. Uh, we're honest. We're honest when something goes wrong. We take ownership when something, you know, when we do something that may have hurt another person. And, you know, we talk when things are peaceful through things. It doesn't mean I don't still do things uh, that may or may not upset them. I'm a human being, you know, and that's one thing I do have to clarify in my house once in a while because they're like, but you're a parent coach, but I'm human. I'm not perfect. I'm human. Nobody's perfect. So, you know, I think, I think that's key is really taking the cues from one another, having an open, honest dialogue and, and allowing your kids to move through things themselves. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that because um, as a parent, you it's very easy to actually step in and solve the problems for them and give them solutions and give them all the answers. But if you are there to help them, empower them and actually facilitate the, the, the part where they actually arrive to the answer or the conclusion themselves, then I think that's, a, that's what the real, you know, role of a parent is mm -hmm. that you let the children, you know, guide them to, to the actual solution rather than actually solve everything for them and then, you know, get the solution because then they are not growing. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I absolutely love that. Um, and also, you know, something really powerful, um, you know, just on the back end of it is the fact that, we have to learn about our children. Like they are a different person altogether and they have their own, like you say, a world, they have their own world. So we have to constantly learn about who they are mm -hmm. and you know, what, what is it that they are interested in? What is it that they value? And the only way you can do that is by stepping into their world. So I think that, that is again, a really, really powerful uh, piece of advice for for uh, any of the parents who are watching right now, um, <laughs> and I think you know it's uh, it's very true. Like in my case, um, this morning I'll give you an example. I mean, I usually don't talk about my kids first of all because I like to keep my 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 private life private, uh, but also the fact simply because um, you know when they grow up, they they might not you know appreciate the fact that their dad has been talking about them and or you know uh, this kind of thing. So I respect that as well, but just this morning, I'll share this. Uh, I'll came downstairs and I was having breakfast. I just sat down with them and this, they had this time, they're on holidays at the moment. They're quite young. So they have this time where they can sit down and spend some time with technology in the morning. Um, and, and then we go on and do the rest of the day. It's all planned out. So they were sitting down, they were playing this game on the iPad. 
taking turns and I sat down next to them and just, just like, Hey, you know, what are you guys doing? Show me. Uh, and first of all, they got super excited and they were telling me all sorts of amazing stuff. And this is what this is. We unlock this and this is how much we've leveled up here. And this is what the next stage is. And look at this and look at that. Super excited. They just love to just share things. And all I had to do was just sit down and say, Hey, what are you guys up to? Um, and the second thing is I was just awestruck by how good they were at playing that game. I mean, they're six and three, but their reflexes, their, their reactions were unbelievable. So I actually learned something about my kids. I was like, this is like, I went to my wife afterwards and I was just like, did you know, have you ever seen those guys? I know you're there on the iPad and they drive us nuts sometimes, but have you seen those guys play that game? I mean, I don't think I could do that. They're just unbelievable. The reaction time is crazy. Um, you know, cause, Things are happening so fast and just reacting so quickly. I don't think I can do that. So yes, just really, really powerful to just what you were saying earlier about you know stepping into the world and just learning about them and see what they're all about. Um, and another quick thing I wanted to say, just on the back end of something else that you said earlier, was that you know when something happens, go back to your children, but go to them at a later time, right? Once you have the chance to kind of cool down and process everything. Um, and this is something that. Um, I do with my kids is that if something's happened, say I end up shouting at them or yelling at them or whatever, telling them off um, because, you know, as you do, <laughs> <laughs> so I then approach them afterwards, um, usually at bedtime. And I say, you know, this happened, uh, but I want you to know that I still love you. It was just that one thing at that one moment in time, that was the problem. And we're now going to try and see if we can fix that problem. So what happened, you know, what should we do next time? And, you know, um, what went wrong this time? Et so we have a conversation on that. But the one thing I actually reassure them is that I still love you. That's not changed. It was just in that moment that I ended up telling you off or I shouted at you or whatever. It was just that one thing and just that one moment. But the rest of it, like, I, I, I still love you. And if you have, you know, any concerns, we can talk about it. Yeah, unconditional love is crucial. And, mm -hmm. you know, ag again, I mean, we're, we're showing our children that we're human beings yeah. and that we make mistakes. We're showing them it's okay to make a mistake. Just own it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And I love what you shared about climbing into your kid's world I, and, and the, the brightness in your children. I mean, the excitement. And that when we climb into their world, it is exciting for them. It's exciting that we take interest and we want to know more about what they're enjoying, oh, whether yeah. it's, you know, the iPad, whether it's something outside. I mean, my kids used to dig in the dirt and dig up, you know, worms and stuff. <laughs> I didn't have any interest in worms, but I did sit and watch and, you know, and be entertained by their love of it. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's really, it goes a long way in a child's life. And these are memories in the making. Mm. Uh, it's, it's what I like to refer to as the highlight reel. These are the things that our children will remember about their childhood. And, you know, unconditional love, it should be given in every household. It shouldn't come and go because of behavior or, you know, issues. It should always be there. Behavior yeah. and issues are just momentary lapses in whatever for us or for them that, you know, relationships are all about. Every relationship has mm -hmm. its ups and downs. Yeah. But loving them, it, you know, unconditionally, regardless of anything else is just an enormous gift that we can give them every day. Mm, and I think it's really important that for children to, to constantly know and, and be reminded of the fact that if something happens, it's not because mom and dad don't love me anymore. Uh, it's just that something happened and we just had like, that was the situation that came up and has to be dealt with. We need to talk through it, but that doesn't mean that mom and dad don't love me because you know, that's the one thing that will really deteriorate the relationship. So um, I just shared that simply because I'm very conscious of it. So I, I really go and always talk about it. Look, I still love you. Nothing else has changed. Everything is fine. You know, we're still best friends, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's just that something happened. We need, you know, and, and then we, we, we need to deal with that situation. That's, that's mm -hmm. all it was. Um, and I think also the fact that the children appreciate the fact that you do go up to them and, and, you know, you, you explain to them, Hey, this happened and I'm sorry, you know, um, I'm sorry that I shouted at you. And this is something you, you, you hinted towards earlier as well. You know, that you go and you say sorry to your children and that's okay. That, that's, that's fine. You know, as, as a parent, I think a lot of the times there is the barrier to, you know, I, I, I can't 
say sorry to my children or anything like that because they're my children, right? Like they're younger than me and like I, I have the responsibility of care and all sorts of other stuff. And, you know, they need to be listening to me. They need to be following instructions, all sorts of other stuff. So, yeah, I think that's really powerful. Yeah, and I, I think that um, with that it also goes the fact that these are teaching lessons. These are teachable mm -hmm. lessons. And our children, you know, many parents want to have logical conversations during a blow up. You know, their child's upset and they want to explain to their child why it has to be this way or, you know, something very logical. I think the thing we have to keep in our minds is that our children's brain are not, brains are not fully developed until somewhere between 25. Now they're pushing it closer to 30, yeah. uh, research says. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is when, when someone is not in a calm state of mind, child or adult, we cannot comprehend anything logical about what was just going on. Mm. So it's, it's not good for the parent. It's not good for the child. So if you're calm and your child's not, and you're trying to explain to your child, you know, why you have to leave a store, they do not hear you. They don't mm. hear you. And so compassion and kindness are the keys to this particular scenario when your child is upset, not logic and, you know, and, uh, nagging and you know a process that you need your child to understand where you're coming from in that moment won't happen so you know letting go of these expectations and really being with your child where your child is meet your child where they are mm -hmm. and you know this is something that I help parents with all over the world in my private practice is we have to meet the child where the child is that's yeah. understanding the child seeing the child valuing the child loving the child you know creating conditions all of it Mm. is meeting the child where the child is, not where you want them to be, not the expectations you had before you gave birth, but where is your child now? Mm. Yeah, and, and for people in the audience, I think that's another absolute uh, you know, piece of gold right there for you that you know, the children, they, they do not think like an adult. Right. It's really impossible for a six year old to think like, you know, somebody who's in their 20s or their 30s. But it's it's we as parents, however, do have the capacity to go back and think like a six year old. So it's us. The responsibility is with us to make sure that we are not like like, you know, Sue said, we're not trying to, you know, explain logic to them. And that goes, you know, in a completely different direction, but to deal with kindness and compassion um, and understand what they're going through. Like they're having an emotional kind of like a, you know, a breakdown <laughs> at that point. So what is it that, that can really help them? It's not about you. It's about them. So I absolutely, that's so amazing. I love that. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, awesome. Right. Sue, like, you know, you have come on and, and just like, blown my mind. I absolutely love this conversation. I love to stay on and talk with you for hours and hours and hours. Um, I, I'm sure we can go down and explore so many different rabbit holes, yes. but I'm very conscious of your time. So before we close up, can you share with us where people can go to find out more about you, um, about your coaching practice, etc., and uh, also how people can reach out and connect with you? Absolutely. So um, my website is decaro, D-E-C-A-R-O, Parent Coaching. And I'm a worldwide parent coach and educator. So you can send me a message through my website. I'm also uh, have an official page called Sue DeCaro on Facebook. Uh, very original. And you can message me. You can, uh, you know, send me a note. I'm always happy to respond. And I do respond very quickly to every message I receive. I also have a private group called Conscious Parents Thriving Kids. So if you are a parent, you can connect with me through that group and I'd be happy to invite you in, learn about you and help you in your, on your journey in raising your beautiful spirits in front of you. So those are the most important ways. You can also send me an email at sue at decaroparentcoaching.com. Excellent. Guys, all those links, etc., will be below in the description. So make sure you go check them out. And if you are a parent or if you're hoping to start a family or, or you're somebody who's expecting to become a parent, then I'd say it's super important that you go and you know, check out Sue's work and reach out to her, connect with her, start a conversation because she is absolutely world-class. She has so much value to offer. And I think this conversation 
uh, was just full of golden nuggets throughout. She has some really, really powerful messages that she shared with us in this conversation. And I don't think this conversation was actually enough. I'm sure we could go down <laughs> and, and stay on for hours and talk about so much more stuff. You know, there's so much more to explore, so much more to talk about. And especially for me, this is a, this is a very passionate subject since I'm a parent myself, as I said before. So um, I want to make sure that I, I show up as the best parent that I can possibly be for my children. So this channel is all about holistic success and we want to explore what does it take to be successful in every area of your life, including parenting. So this interview, I think, was just phenomenal. And I think Sue's message, uh, her mission is super powerful. So if you are a parent, you're hoping to become a parent, you're an expecting parent, or if you know of other people who might be parents um, and are struggling uh, with some element of parenting or you know their, their behavior with their children, anything like that, then make sure you share it with them as well because I think there's a lot that they can, they can pick up on through this conversation. And also Sue herself, I think she will have so much value to add to you and, and anybody else you know who might be a parent as well. So make sure you do that. Um, Sue, is there anything we can help you with right now? It's been an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, I have had just so much fun talking with you. So thank you. I appreciate it. And again, anyone that has any questions about parenting or conscious living, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my passion is to help people all over the world, really. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. And, and you know what? It shows. Um, I, I think you are somebody who is so open, so giving, and you have a lot of value to add. And I think the... The experience that you have had as a parent, the journey that you have been on is super powerful because I think so many people can relate to that. You know, everything that you have been through, everything that you have experienced, I think people need to hear about it. So it's super powerful. It was a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. And maybe we can go for round two sometime. Sounds great. <laughs> awesome. Right, guys. Thank you so much. Like I said, make sure you share this conversation with other people who need to hear these messages, these ideas, these concepts, which will help them accelerate their lives and become a better parent. So make sure you do that. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to the channel because it helps us grow and it allows us to bring on more amazing guests so we can join this kind of conversation. We can jump on these kind of calls, have these conversations and learn from their expertise, uh, expertise, their stories, their journeys. So we can accelerate our lives. And I think that's really important because I am really passionate about exploring what holistic success is all about. So if you're curious about this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It allows you to stay up to date with everything else that's going on on the channel, as well as the interviews landing straight in your email inbox. So you don't have to look around and find out what's going on. So with that, make sure that you stay awesome. Hustle hard, like it says back there, hustle hard, and I'll catch you in the next one.